Code monkey get up get coffee Code monkey go to job Code monkey have boring meeting With boring manager Rob Rob say code monkey very diligent But his output stink His code not functional or elegant What do code monkey think? Code monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself Code monkey not say it out loud Code monkey not crazy just proud Code monkey like Fritos Code monkey like Tao and Mountain Dew Code monkey very simple man Big warm fuzzy secret heart Code monkey like you What's new, Dino Dudes? It's me, the Media Raptor, and welcome back to another episode of the Media Raptor Reviews. It's finally here, Dino Dudes. Finally, after a few weeks of putting it off and getting notes ready and just kind of gathering my thoughts and recording footage, I am finally here with this delicious bottle of vitamin water to talk about the sequel to Injustice Gods Among Us. A movie, no, not a movie, a game I reviewed a few years ago when I had just passed 50 subscribers. Now, as we close in on the 1,000 mark, let's talk about Injustice 2. No subtitle. Yeah, it's just Injustice 2. But then again, really the best thing I could think of would, would have been Injustice 2. The gods have fallen, or fallen gods, or the titans of yesteryear, or something. I don't know, I think it's best that they just decided to stick with Injustice 2. Granted, it's better than what happened in England, because those people are so, well, so uptight and have their heads so far up their they called this game Injustice the Mighty Among Us. Because apparently, saying God is somehow offensive. Yeah, the UK is kind of a huge mess right now. I am really thankful I don't live there. So, two years. I must have been planning a pretty big review if I was going to be gone. Well, if I was going to take two years from when this game came out and when I beat it to, that, to now. You want to know what happened? I tried to start a gaming channel. I called it the Digital Raptor. It's still up on YouTube. I just haven't gotten around to deleting it. It never really went anywhere. I played through a little bit of Watch Dogs the DLC and played a little bit of Injustice. The issue was I had my old MacBook that was from like the year 2004. So when I was trying to use Final Cut Pro on it to edit the videos, it either overheated and shut off or it just would delete everything and close down. Pretty quickly I realized, yeah, YouTube doesn't need another Let's Player, so I'm just going to stick to what I do best, reviews. Now, a little bit of background on Injustice 2 here. Uh, it's the sequel to Injustice. No duh. Made by NetherRealm, all that good stuff came out in 2017. If you guys don't remember, I was pretty hyped about this game when it was announced. Uh, I'll link it down below to the old reaction I made to the trailer. This game was one of those games when I just went full send with it. Pretty much when it was announced there was going to be a special edition, I went and pre-ordered it. This was the, like, the collector's edition you could get, was just a steelbook and some characters. Which is kind of disappointing considering the previous game gave you a fight stick. This isn't it, it was like a custom injustice one, but yeah. I don't know what's up with Netherrealm, but their collector's editions have been just kind of getting less and less. I mean, look at the MK11 one. I'm glad I didn't order that and just got this instead. Anyhow, so Injustice 2 had some pretty big shoes to fill because for quite a while, this was the game that got me into fighting games. Before I had my PS4, when I had a PS3, I, I really wanted Injustice. Because of this, I was introduced into Scorpion, which then led me back to my old laptop that had Mortal Kombat 9 on it, which then led me to Mortal Kombat X, and then that led me to getting a PS2 and all the old Mortal Kombat games, and really, my love of fighting games stems from Injustice. So, the fact that Injustice not only was one of my favorite fighting games, but had one of the best stories, and had a fantastic, roughly 62, I believe, maybe... Hang on, if it was five... I think 65 issues, comic series, of which I own all but 13 of. So that'd be... 51, I think? 
I don't know, but I own I own all of year two, three, four, and five, including all the annuals and stuff, and I own like two issues from year one. It has one of the greatest comic adaptations of all time because the story actually lent itself to being a five-year story. Uh, and Justice 2 had some pretty big shoes to fill, both in the comic department and the game department. Did it succeed? Well, let's start with a story. That's usually a good place to begin. Injustice 2 had a very ambitious campaign idea. What if Brainiac showed up? And you know, we were still dealing with the fallout of Superman going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and killing a lot of people. I mean, the regime had fallen, but what did that leave us with? What about newcomers such as Dr. Fate, Atrocitus, Swamp Thing, Scarecrow? What about these guys who weren't in the previous game? Gorilla Grodd and the Syndicate with characters like Cheetah and Captain Cold. The rogues showing up. What does this mean for the world of this alternate universe, DC universe that we know and love? A lot. And that's kind of where the issue is. See, the game kind of has roughly three stories all happening at once. It has this, the main overarching story concerning Brainiac destroying Krypton years ago. By the way, like I said at the beginning, massive spoilers. Brainiac kind of, you know, destroying Krypton as he always does, or at least in this version does. Him setting his sights on Earth. Then in the meantime, we have Gorilla Grodd and the a aforementioned Syndicate, which is a bunch of bad guys trying to take over the world with the telepathic gorillas. Uh, we also have Superman coming to terms with what he's done, eventually being set free and then kind of trying to restart the regime. We have Batman trying to pick up the pieces and keep moving forward with the aftermath of both what happened with Dick Grayson and uh, Damian Wayne. And while all this is happening, Black Adam is doing his own thing. Wonder Woman has to escape from the Amazonians. Yet yeah, that is kind of tying into the comics. Supergirl was here and for some reason was just kind of doing her own thing for a while. And she gets dragged into all this. Not to mention Brother Eye is happening. And, well, the rogues are here as well, kind of doing their own thing. As well as the Suicide Squad, who is here against their will for Gorilla Grodd's bidding as part of the Syndicate. Uh, hey, Dino Dudes. Raptor here in post-production real quick, this is not the last time you'll hear me doing this. I made a few mistakes in this review, and rather than ignore them or put text over it, I want to explain what went wrong. Uh, the rogues and the Suicide Squad do not really play a big role in the actual story. They play a much larger role in the comics, which if you haven't read, there's going to be a number of points where things don't make any sense. Uh, for example, Damian Wayne supposedly has been in jail this entire time, but in the comics, not only was he out and about, but he also had met Supergirl, who was out and about doing her own thing when in this very scene you're watching, she's talking about being trapped in this one place. Also, you may notice Wonder Woman is here, and I mentioned, yeah, her escaping the Amazonians, that only happened in the comic, and they have one line here, and they never really talk about it again. Aside from her ending in the tower. On the one hand, that's just fine, but on the other hand, it's really gonna throw off a lot of viewers, especially people who don't know there is a comic series. The main issue with that is the fact that, yes, it is a prequel comic technically, but it was still coming out and being made after uh, the game had come out for quite a while. Anyhow, just wanted to get that out real quick. This is not the last time you'll hear me. Sorry, enjoy the review. Yeah. I think you might be able to see where the issue is. I'm not saying a big ambitious story can't be done in a video game, especially a fighting game. I think it can be done. MK9 did a great one, MKX did a pretty decent one, and MK11 is seeming to have a fantastic one. But Injustice 2 tries to cram so much story into one game, which is only about five, six hours at most, roughly four or five hours of campaign actually, and it suffers from not being that memorable. I can tell you a lot of scenes in the first Injustice, such as the Atlantean attack, Superman killing Shazam, Superman and the alternate universe Batman, like the Earth-1 Batman meeting, the showdown between the two Supermen. Like these scenes that had real impact, emotion, and character changes behind them just don't feel pre as present as they do in Injustice 2. Now granted, there was a lot of great stuff in the Injustice 2 story. The story on its own, if it wasn't a sequel to Injustice, I would have thought it is borderline perfection. All the characters are written incredibly well, the conflict is very realistic, and much like the first one, it continues to kind of deal a little bit with the politics and the questions of morality concerning can heroes change? Or can a bad hero become good? Or can a hero who did horrible things ever become a hero again? 
It asks questions that I think are really interesting and I wish they devoted more time to rather than just, oh yeah, you can talk about that later. Fight this guy! Hey, yeah, me again. Uh, listen. Something that I need to mention? While the story does have interesting character dilemmas of like, yeah, maybe, like, is it wrong to kill and all that stuff? It paints Batman as an absolute moron. I get it, Batman doesn't kill, that's his one rule, he's really strict about it. But I think after a while, Batman would consider killing, especially someone like Brainiac who's trying to destroy the entire multiverse. Like, there might be a point when even he would have to admit, or at least consider, that they might have to be willing to get their hands dirty this time. But the game kind of goes, no, no, Batman's so great, he's above this all, he's a hero, he doesn't kill people when thousands of innocent people have not already died beforehand because of this, including all of Injustice 1, but a lot of innocent people die because of that now. Yeah. While it is an interesting conflict, it certainly does make Batman seem like a complete idiot. And to be honest, I'm starting to think he might be. And yes, the comics do kind of talk about it, but the comics were nowhere near as good as the Injustice 1 comics. I don't know exactly what happened, but these ones, a good chunk of them just kind of felt like they were written because, well, Injustice 1 had comics and therefore we needed comics in here. Now this isn't to say that there's any real, like, poor character moments or anything like that. There are, and I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but the story itself is certainly serviceable. I think part of what made me remember the first Injustice story more, excuse me, was aside from the fact that there was the first like real fighting game I sat down and played, and it was the story and the comics that literally got me into comics in DC to begin with. Yeah, like I bought the comics for this game, and they were got me into reading comics. I think aside from the whole, like, you know, your first experience sort of thing, that one, while it was a bit shorter, was a lot more concise with, okay, this is happening, we need to do this, we need to do this, and we need to do this to stop this. This one, it was kind of like, these two things are happening, cool. But when you do this one thing, all of a sudden, another bad guy, and then when you defeat him, ha, huh, he's just a henchman for another bad guy, and then, oh no, Grodd was just a henchman for Brainiac, and... Everything just keeps kind of building on top of each other, and it feels like they maybe should have tried to add more to the last third to try and give you a real payoff. On top of that, there were quite a few characters in here I really felt like we didn't need. Either because I don't like the character, and this is going to be kind of biased, or they just sort of show up, go, hey, yeah, bye, I'm here, and then disappear, and they're really kind of pointless in the game itself, which I'll talk about when I get to gameplay. Or... they're a mix of both. Namely, Harley Quinn and the Joker. Here's the honest truth. I don't like Harley Quinn. I genuinely don't. She, to me, the only time she really works is as a sidekick to the Joker. Not as this whole trying to be better sort of young model for girls, considering the fact that she has killed so many innocent, innocent people. One comic even including her setting off bombs, killing thousands of innocent children and innocent people just to try and get the Joker's attention. And aside from that, she isn't funny. She isn't, and people think she is. She thinks she is. She's really annoying. And they keep trying to, like, and DC is really trying to push her in all their stuff, because I think DC knows they don't really have that many good characters they haven't royally screwed up yet, like Batman and Superman. Although, oh, wow, the power just went out. And the power's back. Huh. Neat. Glad I wasn't playing a game or something. Anyhow, my point is... Yeah, I don't like Harley Quinn. Namely because the character I feel is trying to be overused and they haven't given her enough time to genuinely change. I do like the Injustice version a little bit better because they actually did have a bit of a character arc for her in the comics. But certainly in the games you don't really see that, so... Whatever, I guess. And as for the Joker... He works... In some cases, this is not one of them. The Joker, for some reason, if it's anything Batman, the Joker has to be in it. Here's the thing. <sighs> he doesn't. In fact, the more you guys try and put him in stuff, the worse off he is. See, the Joker is a kind of character who has to be used in unique and special ways. The Dark Knight did him perfect. The Dark Knight Returns, one of my favorite versions of him. 
Batman the Animated Series, The Killing Joke. These are all some of the greatest versions of Joker who have ever been shown. Joker in the 1989 Batman movie. Even, the jo even Joaquin Phoenix in the new Joker film looks great. In this game... What did they do to him? Aside from the fact that he looks like nothing... The Joker, like, that looks like nothing the Joker would ever wear. This is just the most meaningless forced cameo I have ever seen. So yeah, he really has no reason to be in here because he only shows up this one time. And yeah, by the way, he's still dead. He should really stay that way. I didn't like it in Arkham Knight when they brought him back and I sure don't like it in here. Other characters I feel were kind of pointless. Cheetah, Dr. Fate, Poison Ivy, and Swamp Thing. Now, this isn't a lack, this, and kind of Captain Cold, but I'll get to him in a minute. That isn't for a lack of, you know, interesting character, because I think all four of them are very interesting characters and very well written characters. In fact, the comics did it better. Just once again, they're given very little screen time, and then that's it. You don't get to play as them in the story, you just fight a couple of them, and that's it. And even Dr. Fate, I think he literally just shows up once, and that's it. Overall, I feel like the roster could have been a bit better. Granted, the DLC totally makes up for it because the Ninja Turtles, Hellboy, the Atom... Okay, I forgive you guys. Red Hood, Black Manta, I forgive you guys completely for that. What I don't forgive you for, and we're gonna move a little bit from story, which hopefully you understand when I say is good, nowhere near as good as the first, to gameplay. Let's continue talking about the roster why did you put both Raiden and Sub-Zero in the game? Now, I'm not against these guys being here because mostly I would use uh, Static Shock and just kind of say, oh yeah, it's Static Shock, not Raiden. Cool. My main issue with especially having Sub-Zero in this game is it kind of makes Captain Cold pointless. See, the thing with fighting games, especially with Sub-Zero, if you're using this, all you would do in MKX is down forward triangle and boom, you'd freeze somebody. Simple as that. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this, same thing. Very simple to use, very simple to grasp, and very fun to play. Captain Cold, for some reason, can't do that. Yeah. His frost gun, you have to charge it up to special level 3, which is very can be very annoying to do and especially easy to be interrupted in. And if you overshoot it, then you can't use it for a few seconds and you have to recharge the entire thing. So what happens if you just happen to go left, right, square? You fire an icicle. What happens if you, I don't know, meter burn it? You fire a bigger icicle. He has no move aside from one that actually freezes the opponent and even the one that it does it's more of a trap than anything to me captain cold i love this character he is one of the funniest in the game i just wish he was better i feel like he could have been better but as for everyone else every character in this game aside from a few those few being let's see like I mentioned earlier, Joker, Harley Quinn, Enchantress, Swamp Thing, Poison Ivy, uh, I feel like I'm missing one. Brainiac is kind of annoying. They're kind of hard to control. He's not as easy, you know, to play as you would think when you fight him in the actual, like, tower mode and story mode. And boy, I'll get to that in a minute. Most of these characters, like 90% of them, all control incredibly fluently. They're very easy to pick up and play. In fact, all their special moves and combos are very basic, but also simple enough, or very simple. Simple enough that a newcomer can easily learn in a few minutes, but a professional can master over a couple days. The reason why you see people like Honeybee and Sonic Fox doing so well in tournaments with these characters? Simple. They're very well-designed characters. Yes, it is true, Deadshot was kind of overpowered when they started, but thankfully they've mostly patched that. But yeah, newcomers like Supergirl and Scarecrow, Gorilla Grodd, and let's see who else, Firestorm and Blue Beetle? I loved them. I had a lot more fun with them than I thought I was going to. Especially because, well, I didn't know much about them. But yeah, Supergirl is much more like a faster version of Superman. 
Blue Beetle, I love using him because he's got some great mix-up and com mix-ups and combos. Uh, Firestorm, he's great to use to try and keep people at a distance or be unpredictable with his fire attacks. And Scarecrow, he's just awesome. And let's talk about that DLC for a minute. Characters like Hellboy, the Ninja Turtles, Black Manta, Red Hood, these are the characters I have always wanted in a fighting game. These are the characters I wish would be in more fighting games. These are the characters I wish had their own fighting games. Yes, I know TMNT Smash Up does exist. My point is, this is the definitive way to actually have Batman and Hellboy crossover aside from in the comics. To have Batman meet the Ninja Turtles, much like they're going to in that animated movie I am so excited for. To have Black Manta take on the Flash. Like, this game gives you so many great characters. And all those old returning characters like Bane, the Flash, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, uh, Superman, Batman. I'm just thinking, oh, uh, Black Adam. Yeah, all the returning characters, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, they all have fantastic character designs and they're a lot of fun to play. The Flash is a ton of fun. Uh, Cyborg is a ton of fun. Catwoman is surprisingly good, especially compared to her Injustice 1 version. Well, I will say, it, well, I will admit, it does feel like some of the characters they took are kind of like some D-tier characters. They were maybe trying to make a bit better. They didn't as much as I think they were hoping to. But yeah, something else that makes this game so, so good is the animation. All you have to do is look at the cutscenes and the footage I'm showing you, and much like I've been saying with MK11, when this game came out, it felt like I was playing a movie. NetherRealm Studios put so much time and effort into things such as facial animations, storytelling, even continuity notices towards costuming and stuff like that and wear and tear over damage over time, that most companies would just kind of go, eh, whatever, it is what it is, let's just keep rolling with it. But no, Injustice 2 goes out of its way to make sure everything looks as good as it possibly can. While there are a few, I believe there are fewer stages than in Injustice, I didn't go through and count them all, I do like these stages more. I like Metropolis hanging out and fighting in the pub. I like fighting in Kondark, is it, where Black Adam rules. I like fighting on Brainiac's ship, and Arkham Asylum is so much better than the old one. And most importantly, the stage uh, transitions are back, and they're equally as over-the-top and hilarious. Yeah, those never get old. Something else that really helps this game is the cast. There was not a single bad line delivery or bad actor and actor or actress in this entire game. In fact, a good number of these actors and actresses are act you'll know them from other stuff. In fact, most of the time when I was doing my research on this game, I was going, that's where I knew that person from. For example, we have Kevin Conroy playing Batman. If that sounds familiar, he's been playing Batman since 1992 with Batman the Animated Series. I am the knight. Phil Lamar is playing uh, Aquaman, and John Stewart uh, premier skin for Green Lantern. If you don't know that, he's Hermes Godred from Futurama and Samurai Jack. Steve Bloom, you know, Spike, Wolverine, and Zeb. Yeah, he's playing Green Lantern regularly and Sub-Zero. Laura Bailey, you know, from Critical Role, Mary Jane from Spider-Man 2018. She's Supergirl. I am gonna completely mess up this name, but Fred Tadaskorn? I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry, dude. He plays uh, Bane and Swamp Thing, but you might know him as Dingle Dial from the Insane Trilogy, Gorilla Grodd and Deathstroke in Batman Ninja, and Megatron in Fall of Cybertron, which is one of my favorite iterations of Megatron ever. Matthew Mercer, my man, I love that guy, plays Deadshot, you'll know him as Hit from Dragon Ball Fighters, Espio from Sonic Forces, of course, McCree from Overwatch, and Critical Role. Alan Tudyk? I was surprised to see that. You know, to, uh, you know, uh, Wash from Firefly and King Candy from Wreck and Ralph and K2SO from Rogue One plays Green Arrow. Robert England, need I say more, Mr. Freddy Krueger himself plays Scarecrow, which is the perfect casting choice. I don't think I've seen a single casting choice aside from Ron Perlman as Hellboy, who has done a better job in their role. I l that's one of the reasons why I loved Scarecrow so much, because everything about the character was perfect and they got the perfect voice actor for him. 
Tara Strong, as much as I don't like Harley Quinn in this game, she still does a good job. She also played Twilight Sparkle and Timmy Turner. Uh, I wanted to mention Bruce Barker. He played Hellboy. This is a really good Hellboy. Like, you can tell it's not Ron Perlman, but it is still exactly what you would want from an actor who's playing Hellboy. I just hope David Harbour can do well in the 20, uh, in the remake coming out soon. And Kerry Payton plays Cyborg. If that sounds familiar, he also played Cyborg on Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go, and also plays King Ezekiel on The Walking Dead. So yeah, I've talked about the characters, I've talked about the story, let's talk a bit more about the gameplay. Once again, Injustice brings back the good and the bad of its gameplay. Like I said, combos and heavy attacks and special attacks and super moves are all still back. They're simple, they're easy to learn, and they're a lot of fun. I love the updated super moves, with some of my favorites being Bane, Scarecrow, Hellboy, the TMNT, Batman. There's so many great ones I can make a top 10 list on them, but I'm not going to, I don't want to waste your time. But it also brings back some of the bad. Stuff such as bounce cancels or clashing, which doesn't really tell you how to ever do them unless you redo the tutorial six or seven times. And most people who aren't playing competitively aren't gonna pay too much attention to. So yeah, it can be a little annoying when you go online and all of a sudden you find out, oh wow, I'm playing against a professional for some reason, even though the online, cause has, yeah, the online matchmaking is kind of horrible. And yeah, it's pretty much you're just gonna get taken down by someone playing the Flash or Deadshot because they are much better than you, so don't even bother trying. Something else that I both love and kinda don't like what they've done with it a bit is the multiverse. Essentially, they're the living towers from MKX and the uh, battle mode from Injustice, the first one. My issue with it is this it's really hard to find. For some reason, they put it on the main menu as, yeah, multiverse, okay? You gotta go to the multiverse, let it load, get through all the messages and stuff, then you gotta go all the way to Battle Simulator at the end to finally be able to do the character ladders to get the character story endings. Now with that being said, there are some in here I think are fantastic. Hellboys is a personal favorite of mine, not just because of the voice actor, but also because of the animation they did. They got the art style to look so close to Mike Magnolia, I think it may have been him who did it. And I love this art. Captain Cold made me laugh out loud when I first saw it. Going after the regime was one thing, but destroy the planet for Brainiac? You really thought I'd go through with it, Grodd? Really? F*** you! Scarecrow's is terrifying, Batman's is hopeful, Green Lantern's is really intriguing, and I hope we'll continue on that if they ever make a third Injustice. Pretty much, it's a great mix of both hopeful for the future and horrifying of what could really come to be if some characters were able to take over. Which is exactly what I would want from it. But I also will admit, it is a little annoying how some of the multiverses can be so frustratingly hard and they really give you no chance, and unless you're a professional, you're kinda SOL on it. So overall, it seems like I'm a really big fan of Injustice 2. Is there anything in it that I really don't like? Two things. One, this has kind of been a staple of Injustice games for a while, so I can't complain too much. Brainiac is really annoying. See, when you fight him in like both the story mode and in the, uh, well, the simulator mode, as they call it, he's cheaper than Corrupted Shinnok and Shao Kahn put together. Seriously, he's got moves that can take away half your health bar if you even get touched on the edge of it, and I swear, the hitboxes on you are so much bigger than they are on him. Multiple times, I literally just yelled, screw it, left the battle simulator, came back, set it to very easy because I wanted to see the characters' endings so I could record them, because some characters like Enchantress and Captain Cold are pitifully weak against him even on easy mode. Yeah, and I know what some people might say, oh, just get good with it, dude, you need to get better. I'm trying to, but some characters just don't work. Like I said, Enchantress, Dr. Fate, and a few others, really, they just shouldn't have been here. Because they had great concepts, but terrible executions. That's the best way to summarize my biggest problem with this game. One that I genuinely cannot look past, one I cannot excuse, and one I genuinely hate. The gear. 
I, I hate this so much. I really hate this. Like, you don't even understand how much I hate the gear system in this game. So, let me start from the beginning and explain why. In concept, the gear sounds awesome. Unique pieces of clothing let you mix and match to create your own sort of custom variation for a character. Your own personal costume, so to say. That sounds awesome. We have pieces referencing Blackest Night, Red Sun, Earth 2, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Infinite Crisis, Identity Crisis. We have pieces of, like, you know, armor and stuff like that. We have, like, Superman emblems from the Golden Age. We have Wonder Woman outfits from the 1940s. We have... Green Lantern outfits and gear from the very most obscure references that I can tell somebody with a passion for comics knew about and put into this game. And most of it is awesome. I love what you can do with this. The fact that you can choose which Ninja Turtle you want to fight with by changing their weapon to Leo, Raph, Donnie, or Mikey, that's ingenious. The fact that you can customize Green Lantern by changing the Lantern cores with the shaders, that's a great idea. So where does it all go wrong? Two places. One, the augment system. This I really hate because essentially the gear goes, hey, yeah, you want to be fight, you want to be tougher, you want to be stronger, you want to take less damage, equip certain gear in order to do that. Okay. This is not an RPG. This is not Skyrim. This is a fighting game. Most of the people who play it are rapidly mashing buttons hoping for the best. My issue with this, it also ties into the fact that the online matchmaking is an absolute joke. They'll place level 99 players up against a level 3 player like what you're seeing on screen right now. And especially if you don't turn off the gear augmentation system for whatever reason, they're gonna have a level 99 character who's got pretty who is essentially doesn't do much damage but is almost indestructible because they have incredible armor, therefore making it pointless to even try and fight them. And how do you get this gear? Loot boxes. I don't hate loot boxes at all. There are some games when I think they actually work pretty well. Namely Overwatch, because nothing in there actually gives you an advantage. The game is literally based on how much you can cheese the game, or how good you actually are, or if you just pick Brugida or Symmetra because they're stupidly overpowered. My point is, in here, especially when you have a close to 35 fighters, you have no idea what you're going to get. And most of the time, the game, the game is more than willing to give you gold and silver loot boxes pretty simply, or mother boxes as they're called. Thing is, they give you incredibly weak gear. So how do you get gold, sil gold, diamond, and platinum mother boxes? Well, you really have no choice but to play the multiverse and get unbelievably good. Because you can't just buy them, no, that'd be too easy. And can you get this gear anywhere else? Nope. You can hope it'll randomly give it to you as you play the game and after you win a fight it just so happens, hey, here's some free gear for a random character. It's really annoying. See, I hate the gear system because it's such a random gamble. It literally forces you to essentially keep playing the game and hope and pray you can somehow cheese your way through a boss to get that one diamond loot box, and then even then, it's not a guarantee you'll get any gear for any characters you use. So, yeah, you end up with a diamond box full of Joker and Atrocitus gear when you play with Gorilla Grodd, Batman, and Red Hood. Can you trade it in? No. Can you sell them and then buy another one? Sort of. You can sell the gear, but you can't buy diamond or platinum mother boxes with the stuff which when you reach a certain level is what you need to actually get anywhere in the game. So what do you do? Nothing. You can't buy them. For some reason, yeah, you can't buy them. You can only buy source crystals. What are source crystals good for? Buying shaders. And I don't think you can get most of the shaders you would want out of lay mother boxes. So yeah, essentially it turns into one giant kind of circle, and it's really annoying and genuinely angers me. Oh yeah, hey, Raptor here again real quick. Somehow I forgot to mention the fact that you can only have so much gear until your character levels up to a certain point. So then whenever you, if you have characters you don't use, when you get too much gear for them, you have to go through, mark it all, and sell it. But then you might end up selling really rare gear you might want later if you ever choose to play that character. Essentially, it's a never-ending nightmare of which there was no escape and nothing you can really do to counter it. 
let's just hope and pray MK11 does this better. I honestly thought Netherrealm was better than this, because they have the crypt system in Injustice, which shows you, yeah, a great way to unlock skins, go around and take your chances on random things that you don't have to actually pay actual money for unless you want to open them all at once because you're somehow too lazy to play the game. I don't know what happened here, but it really does hurt the game. Because you can spend hours and hours grinding and trying to get as many gold loot boxes as you want, no guarantee you'll get Hellboy gear, or no guarantee you'll get Wonder Woman gear. Now what could they have done to make this better? Simple. Either allow you to buy specific gear at a store at specific times, or make character-specific boxes so with a higher chance of getting gear for that character. Heck, I hate the fact that I'm going to say this, but you know what game does gear augmentation and distribution better than Injustice 2? Splatoon 2. Yeah. This game does gear that changes stats and how you get it better than Netherrealm Studios. Sorry, I kind of went off on a rant there, but I have been saving that up ever since I got this game. I didn't like it when it started, and I still don't like it now. And I'm kind of afraid that they're going to do the same thing with Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, just a quick update. The most recent combat cast did actually confirm there will be no loot boxes, there will be things called time crystals, and the fact that the gear does not change the stats, or at least I don't, I think they said it doesn't change the stats the way it did in Injustice. So while this is valid criticism towards Injustice 2, I do believe that Netherrealm Studios has learned from it and are not repeating this mistake. I believe. I'm kind of nervous about it, so... So wait and see at this point, dudes. Anyhow, Dino Dudes. It might seem like I hate this game, like I can't recommend it, that it's not a good game and you should do everything in your power to stay away from it. Is that true? No. Despite the gear fault, which is something you can completely ignore, you can never touch the boxes and just play the game as it is with your friends, which is what I tend to do, Injustice 2 is a fantastic game still. I'm only giving it three raptor claws out of four because the gear just kind of takes down a notch, quite literally. But there is so much in here. So much references to the best and the worst of comics. So many funny, so many heartfelt, and so many tragic interactions. So much great fighting potential. So much fun to be had with your friends and with people online. There is so much about this game that I genuinely enjoy that I can't help but recommend it. Heck, I've been holding off and spoiling this. There's two endings to the game. A good ending and a bad ending. Now, I'm not going to show you the good or the bad ending because believe me, they are actually fantastic. I really like the bad ending and this game as bad as it sounds. It's really well done. And it really emphasizes the whole fallen hero aspect of this game. But yeah, despite some characters not being perfect, well, not being really that good, and there being some characters I wish weren't here that are here, and the gear system just being kind of a mess, and online matchmaking not being that good, there is still a lot of fun to be had with Injustice 2. It is in no means a bad game. It's a great game that has a few bad things attached to it. And at this point, though, I don't feel like anything is going to get changed because, well, with Mortal Kombat 11 coming out... You know, they might do one or two more patches for balance stuff, but for the most part, they're just going to kind of keep this game on the shelf as a proud, very well-made game, and a great step up from Injustice, graphic-wise. Because yeah, I love this game. I will never stop loving it. Heck, I'm getting some custom artwork made for this, based off a character in here. I'm not going to spoil who it is. You'll just have to follow me on Instagram, at the Media Raptor to find out who. But yeah, the animation, while it was great for its time back in, was it 20? 14, no, 2013, four years later, we got this. You know what? Those were four years I was fine with waiting. And believe me, this is one of those games I actually jumped on the hype train for. From watching Evo and Combo Breaker for the, pit, for the hints towards a potential trailer drop, to checking out the website every few days to see if a new character had gone up because I didn't know to check, their web, to check their YouTube page, to theorizing what the story could be, to getting ready for an awesome time by sitting out Mountain Dew the night before in the fridge to keep it nice and cold. So the day this came out, I could throw on this jersey I was given by a guy who worked at a game store who I was friends with. Yeah, I love it. Check it out. Not sure if the camera's picking it up, but Injustice 2. It's a great jersey. This game did live up to the hype for the most part. Yeah, the story isn't perfect. There are some flaws with it, but 
there really isn't a perfect game I've seen as of yet. If you haven't played Injustice 2, I can recommend it. And that's the best way to end off this review. So until next time, Dino Dudes, this has been the Meteor Raptor, saying keep cool, and I'll see all you Dino Dudes around. Later. Oh, by the way, while you're here, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. That way you'll stay up to date with all the new stuff coming towards you. Got some specials coming up for when we hit 1,000 subscribers. If you are a fan of this game, talk to me in the comments. Let's get a conversation going. Follow me on Instagram at the Media Raptor and friend me on PSN. Just look up the Media Raptor. It should show up as Raptor, I believe, or not Raptor, LOL. Yeah, friend me. We can totally play MK11 or Injustice 2. I really am down to do whatever. That's all. See you guys later.